Hey, thanks for stopping by everyone. Uh, no machining in this video. So this is going to be a little supplemental video for the Volvo Penta Outdrive series that I did a while back. And I had a little project came in. I had to um, uh, basically make one good Outdrive unit out of two um, different units. So essentially we put a new upper uh, section on existing lower assembly and there's some critical shimming uh, whenever you replace the lower uh, assembly with either a new unit or uh, or just swapping it to a different unit you've got to get the bearing that's in between the two housings shimmed properly so I show how to do that in this uh, video I did some other work on this unit but I had to get this project out the door, so I didn't get a chance to film everything. But anyways, I hope this is helpful to somebody, so uh, let's get into it. I got another Volvo um, Marine Outdrive project here to work on. There's half of it, and then the other half is around here somewhere. Yeah, and here's the other half, so I've got to make a good unit out of these two. Um, the upper unit that was with this one had problems, and then uh, this lower unit is fine. So I just kind of made them together, do the shimming and so forth. So, so the um, the upper gearbox is is new, along with the, the midsection. Um, one problem is it's been dropped. So if we look here, we can see that this top cover has been tweaked. And there's a crack here, so we need to replace the top cover, which involves also re-shimming the bearing. So we'll do that. It's actually shimming for the bearing crush and the, and the gasket. So we'll, we're going to be doing that. The other issue is, the even though it had a brand new U-joints, the input spline yoke. Here we go is the newer fine uh, pitch so the uh, customer already had removed that but he needed a little help getting it back on so here's off of a donor unit here's a coarse spline and this matches what he has in his boat so we're going to clean that up and uh, put, a, put a u joint in there so that's the other thing we've got to do um, the and then we're, we're going to give it a check out just to, you know, we're not going to tear it down, but we're going to, we're going to check what we can. We don't want to fix anything that doesn't need fixing. I mean, it's supposed to be a new unit and it sure looks like it is. Okay. But we have to shim this bearing when we uh, mate the two uh, units together. So that's probably the most technical part of this. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this unit because it's much easier to work on the U-joints and the top cover not that big of a deal but they're just easier to work on if we split the unit plus we can check it out better that way too so we're going to unhook this shifting linkage and uh, we'll get this top uh, split apart okay all right I got our linkage undone all right and I got our our nuts removed from the studs and these are loosened up underneath here so we're just going to take them out and we'll get this top off so you may have to wrap this a bit back and forth to uh, get the upper unit to break loose but this one no problem it's uh it's loosened right up here okay okay there we go nice having a new unit okay there's a couple o-rings here and there's shims down in the bottom here. Let's see if any stuck to the bearing here. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so shims are critical. All right, so here's our shims. Okay, and we'll double check this when we go back together, but we're looking for a two thousandths crush to clamp the bearing. So I'll show you how to do that when we go back together. Looks like they got a little careless at the factory. We got a little nick right here, a couple more here. So there's burrs there. So we're gonna we're gonna deburr all that 
before we go back together also. This side is cleaned up and ready to go. I uh, removed all the factory sealer and I had to do a little draw filing to take care of, uh, we had a little dent right there, took care of that and a couple little high areas and we did a little uh, cleaning in here so we're ready. Alright, so we cleaned off all the factory sealer just using a razor blade and uh, some acetone and we did our deburring of these little nicks down in here and a little bit of draw filing just to take care of a couple little uh, dingus mcgees around here so everything's nice and flat you know, being real careful not to remove any any uh, amount of material uh, we did have to swab out the uh, oil return tube there's a little bit of debris in there and we'll give her everything else one last um, uh, blow out with air before we do any assembly Okay, so to properly shim this this bearing race You got to come in with a depth gauge and take a series of careful measurements of the depth of the housing and you want to do it in several locations uh, Measuring this depth. All right, so I did that this is our intermediate housing. So I took five measurements total and then I took the average of those and rounded it off and I came up to, with a 0.313 as the depth. Okay, now let's go over to the lower housing. Okay, so on the lower housing we do a similar measurement but we put our, um, our bearing race in, make sure everything's clean and we tap this down and it's tricky to get this race to sit flat and against the bearing. You know, if you tap too hard on one side, it'll push it up on the other side. So you, you got to take your time working it down and checking it with your depth gauge until, you, until you've got it down and even. Okay, and the same thing. You take a series of readings from the back of the bearing uh, race cup to the housing surface. Okay, so I did that in five spots. And... My first time around, I, I this was cocked a little bit, so I had to go back and do it again, okay? So, after doing that, here's my bad readings, here's my good readings, okay? Same thing, took the average of all the readings and came up with 0.304, all right? So then you subtract the difference between the two, the intermediate housing versus the lower housing, and here we go right here, okay? So we ended up with a difference of nine thousandths, okay? We're looking for a clearance of one thousandths. So if we add an eight thousandth shim, that's going to give us our clearance of one thousandth, okay? And that's the ideal clearance. And then we'll check the book here in a second to see what the range is. All right, so it's a little confusing. So they say that you can have up to three thousandths clearance allowed but then they also say the maximum clearance is uh, one thousandth so but they also say that the ideal clearance is <laughs> one thousandth so that's what we're shooting for and that's what we're going for all right so according to our calculations we need an eight thousandths shim this is the original one from the old unit so let's see let's check it I've already checked this a couple times but that comes out to about seven and a half thousandths okay pretty close and then <clears throat> I grabbed one of my spare shims here And this one is eight thousandths. Well, just a hair under eight. Let's check a different spot. Okay, so that's eight. We're still just maybe a couple tenths under eight. So this one's a little closer. We're going to use that one. 
That one goes back in the box. All right, so just uh, doing a test fit. So I don't have any O-rings between the housings and the, um, uh, the bearing race cup. It's real hard to get it out of the lower section when, when you do your test uh, measurements. So it's easier just to put the uh, intermediate section on, carefully draw it down, and then it should stay in the upper section when I uh, separate the halves again. And then we'll do the final seating when it's apart. Um, as, you're, as you're bringing these housings together and drawing them down nice and even, you want to keep turning your propeller shaft make sure nothing's binding and then and also check the backlash as you go you can you can uh, usually feel it or hear it um, so we're all the way down we still have a little bit of backlash which is perfect so now I'm gonna separate these and we'll do the final seating on that uh, bearing race okay just gonna get this bearing race seated all the way got a block of wood here because of the uh, return tube there sticks out a little bit it's kind of I got a just a piece of aluminum you guys see all right yeah okay just gonna put that on there try to do this all right I think that's got it all right and then uh, be sure to clean that off really good. Make sure there's no chips or fragments that got in there. If you're using a piece of brass, brass has a tendency to flake off a little bit. So, all right. All right, so this is ready to go back on. O-rings, sealer, and so forth. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, we're ready to go back together. So we got our O-ring here on the oil return tube, a little bit of grease on the water tube, and a thin coat of waterproof grease on all the mating surfaces. Uh, the, the book tells you to use um, a non-hardening sealer. Um, most everybody I know just uses grease, and we've had, you know, fun, good luck going that way. All right. And then on the uh, bottom side, make sure you got your O-ring in here. I got a nice coating of oilproof, <laughs> waterproof grease on that. This O-ring's in place. Our uh, oil strainer's in there and clean. Okay. And same thing, a light coating of waterproof grease on the mating surfaces. Okay. And be sure to um, uh, anti-seize on your bolts. Um, if you don't have anti-seize, grease will work, but anti-seize is preferred. And 28 foot-pounds of torque on these guys, 10 foot-pounds of torque on the smaller ones. Um, you really can't get a torque wrench on these, but you just have to kind of go by feel. Okay, so we're going to put it back together. I'm not going to show that. Um, it's pretty basic. Okay, we're all bolted up. Um, oh, reminder, keep checking your um, propeller shaft as you're tightening the housings. Make sure it keeps turning freely and uh, you still have a little bit of backlash. If it starts to bind up, stop, something's wrong. Your uh, bearing race shim is probably the wrong size. Okay, um, you'll need a modified 5 16 hex key be able to get in <laughs> on these bolts and then if you got a little piece of 5 16 hex stock that really helps to get the get them started in by hand okay don't put a cheater on this okay so this is just you know good firm tightness with this size wrench is all you need okay and then for the uh, smaller ones a uh, quarter inch uh, t-handle is perfect and just, um, let me switch hands here, just your wrist power tightening is all you need. If, uh, you know, if you're a bodybuilder dude, <laughs> maybe a little less, okay? <laughs> so, but you can put a torque wrench, 10, 10 foot pounds if you want, but, you, you know, trying to get a torque wrench on these guys, 
good luck. <laughs> All right, so there we are. Um, one note, the, um, the shaft that comes up through the lower unit, uh, they do have two different length shafts. So if you have a short shaft model, which is kind of rare, they, they have a longer coupling uh, for those. So just FYI on that. All right, so uh, we're, uh, we're good here. We're going to concentrate on the upper unit now. And I forgot to mention, just use a crisscross pattern when you're tightening. And don't do it all at once. Just work your way around. Take your time back and forth and so forth. 